If you work as a data scientist at a web company, you'll probably be asked to spend some time analyzing the results of A-B tests. These are basically controlled experiments on a website to measure the impact of a given change. So let's talk about what A-B tests are and how they work. Let's talk about A-B testing. If you're going to be a data scientist at a big tech web company, this is something you're going to be definitely involved in because people need to run experiments to try different things on a website and measure the results of it. And that's actually not as straightforward as most people think it is. So let's talk about what A-B tests are and what are the challenges surrounding them. So what is an A-B test? Well, it's a controlled experiment that you usually run on a website. I mean, it can be applied to other contexts as well, but usually we're talking about a website. And what we're trying to do is test the performance of some change to that website versus the way it was before. So you have basically a control set of people that see the old website and a test group of people that see the change to the website. And the idea is to measure the difference in behavior between these two groups and use that data to actually decide whether this change was beneficial or not. So for example, I own a business that has a website. We license software to people. And right now I have a nice friendly orange button that people click on when they want to buy a license. Maybe blue would be better. Uh, how do I know? I mean, intuitively, maybe that might capture people's attention more. Or intuitively, maybe people are more used to seeing orange buy buttons and they're more likely, likely to click on that. I could spin that either way, right? So my own internal biases or preconceptions don't really matter. What matters is how people actually react to this change on my actual website. And that's what an A-B test does. It will actually split people up into some people see the orange button, some people see the blue button, and I can then measure the behavior between these two groups and how they might differ and make my decision on what color my button should be based on that data. You can test all sorts of things with an A-B test. We talked about design changes, so you know the color of a button, the placement of a button, the layout of a page, what have you. It might be a whole UI flow, so maybe you're actually changing the way that your purchase pipeline works and how people check out on your website. And you can actually measure the effect of that. Algorithmic changes. Uh, let's go back to the example of doing movie recommendations. Maybe I want to test one algorithm versus another. And instead of relying on error metrics and my ability to do trained tests, you know, what I really care about is driving purchases or rentals or whatever it is on this website. And an A-B test can make me directly can let me directly measure the impact of this algorithm on the end result that I actually care about and not just my ability to predict movies that other people have already seen. Pricing changes. This one gets a little bit controversial. You know, in theory, you can actually experiment with different price points using an A-B test and see if it actually increases volume to offset for the price difference or whatever, but use that one with caution. If customers catch wind that other people are getting better prices than they are for no good reason, they're not going to be very happy with you. So. Keep in mind, doing pricing experiments can have a negative backlash, and you don't want to be in that situation. And anything else you can dream up to. Really, any change that impacts how users interact with your site is worth testing. Maybe it's even you know making the website faster, or could be anything. So the first thing you need to figure out when you're designing an experiment on a website is what are you trying to optimize for? What is it that you really want to drive with this change? And this isn't always a very obvious thing, right? Maybe it's the amount that people spend, the amount of revenue. Okay, well, we talked about the problems with variance in using amount spent, but if you have enough data, you can still you know, reach convergence on that metric at, you know, a lot of times. But maybe that's not what you actually want to optimize for. Maybe you're actually selling some items at a loss intentionally just to capture market share, or you know, there are, there's more complexity that goes into your pricing strategy than just top-line revenue. Maybe what you really want to measure is profit. And that can be a very tricky thing to measure because a lot of things cut into how much money a given product might make, and those things might not always be obvious. And again, if you have loss leaders, this experiment will discount the effect that those are supposed to have. So bottom line, you have to talk to the business owners of the, the area that's being tested and figure out what it is they're trying to optimize for. What are they being measured on? What is their success measured on? What are their you know key performance indicators or whatever the MBAs want to call it? and make sure that we're measuring the thing that actually matters to them, okay? Maybe you just care about driving ad clicks on your website or order quantities to reduce variance. Maybe people are okay with that. And you know, you can measure more than one thing at once too. You don't have to pick one. You can actually report on the effect of many different things, revenue, profit, clicks, ad views. And if these things are all moving in the right direction together, that's a very strong sign that this change had a positive impact in more ways than one, right? So why limit yourself to one metric? Just make sure you know which one matters the most and what's going to be your criteria for success of this experiment ahead of time. 
Another thing to watch out for is attributing conversions to a change downstream. So if the action you're trying to drive doesn't happen immediately upon the user experiencing the thing that you're testing, things get a little bit dodgy. So let's say I change the color of a button on page A, the user then goes to page B and does something else and ultimately buys something from page C. Well, who gets credit for that purchase? Is it page A or page B or something in between? Do I discount the credit for that conversion depending on how many clicks that person took to get to the conversion action? Do I just discard any conversion action that doesn't happen immediately after seeing that change? These are complicated things and you know it's very easy to produce misleading results by fudging how you account for these different distances between the conversion and the change that you're measuring. So keep that in mind too. Another thing that you need to really internalize is that variance is your enemy when you're running an A-B test. So a very common mistake people make who don't know what they're doing with data science is they will put up a test on a, on a web page, you know, blue button versus orange button, whatever it is, run it for a week and take the mean amount spent from each of those groups. And they say, oh, look, the people with the blue button on average spent a dollar more than the people with the orange button. Blue is awesome. I love blue. I'm going to put blue all over the website now. But in fact, all they might have been seeing was just random variation in purchases. You know, they didn't have a big enough sample because people don't tend to purchase a lot. You know, they get a lot of views, but you probably don't have a lot of purchases on your website in comparison. And there's probably a lot of variance in those purchase amounts because different products cost different amounts. So you could very easily end up making the wrong decision that ends up costing your company money in the long run instead of earning your company money if you don't understand the effect of variance on these results. And shortly we'll talk about some principal ways of measuring and accounting for that. And make sure you need to make sure that your business owners understand that this is an important effect that you need to quantify and understand before making business decisions following an A-B test or any experiment that you run on the web. Now, sometimes you need to choose a conversion metric that has less variance. You know, it could be that the numbers on your website just mean that you would have to run an experiment for years in order to get a significant result based on something like revenue or amount spent. So sometimes if you're looking at more than one metric like order amount, you know, order quantity, that has less variance associated with it. And so you might see a signal on order quantity before you see a signal on revenue, for example. And at the end of the day, it ends up being a judgment call. You know, if you see a significant lift in order quantities and maybe a not so significant lift in revenue, then you have to say, well, I think there might be something real that's beneficial going on here. But at the end of the day, the only thing that statistics and data science can tell you are probabilities that an effect is real. You know, it's really up to you to decide whether or not it's real at the end of the day. So let's talk about how to do this in more detail. So that's an introduction to A-B tests. The key takeaway there is just looking at the differences in means isn't enough. When you're trying to evaluate the results of an experiment, you need to take the variance into account as well. So let's go into some examples in our next lecture of how you actually measure the effects of variance using the t-statistic and p-value metrics.